Hey everybody! Today on Rado Runs Through, we're previewing a prototype of horror on the Orient Express. But before I go on, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome to the luxurious Orient Express, a train known for beautiful trips throughout Europe, but not this time. When we got on the train, we did not know that on the passenger manifest were two evil cultists hiding in plain sight. And once the train set off, they did a ritual that pulled the train and all the passengers into the evil dreamlands. And now we are in a race against time um, to discover who amongst these six suspects are the cultists. Uh, instead of a murder on the Orient Express, we are on an interdimensional um, travel on the, on the Orient Express. And to get back to home, we have to figure out who the cultists are by uncovering clues. And who are we? Well, this time, I'm the eccentric millionaire playboy, Cedric Campton. And Jen over here is uh, Katharina, uh, uh, Katarina Kristoff, who is a gifted chemistry professor. And I say gifted, and that's actually really important because there are a bunch of random elements that are associated. If you choose the chemistry professor, you start with the several abilities. Radioactive, panaceum, rationalization, field experiments, lectures, nitrous oxide. But you also start with an attribute. Uh, this time, Jen is gifted, which means she gets two general skills instead of one. So normally players start with one bonus skill, but because she's gifted, Jen has two. And she ended up with spot, hidden, and intimidate. Me, I've got one special ability, fast talking, that joins all of my other millionaire abilities, like using an entourage, help from daddy, uh, let the money talk, etc., etc. But I'm eccentric. And what does that mean? It means I get to start with a random artifact in my inventory. So, it just so happens I'm an eccentric millionaire because I'm always rocking the crown of nightmares. I just I never go anywhere without it. So, this is my special bonus. Jen's bonus is she has two skills instead of me. We also have additional unique skills that change from game to game. And that's us. Who are the suspects? Well, they are the uh, crime book writer, the chef, the uh, maestra, the psychologist, the medium, and oh, good old Seamus Sullivan, the sly boots. So, as part of setup, each one of them is assigned into a first class or a second class berth, and each of them gets a randomized assortment of, well, they get a ticket where they're headed to, what their secret desires are, and they have anywhere from one to three desires. And also, um, what they got. What are they carrying with them? And these are randomly assigned clues are what we have to investigate to figure out who is the cultist before time runs out, before the train reaches the end of the line. So wish me luck, folks. Here we go. How does it work? Well, on my turn, and I'll be the first player, I get to take one major action and two basic actions. The basic actions consume stamina. One of the actions is resting, which gives me my stamina back and lets me reset all my major actions. So every once, I do a bunch of actions, then eventually I rest and I do some more actions. After I do my actions, including resting, if that's what I choose to do, I then draw a tile from the event bag, deal with whatever it is, and then potentially, if enough events have come out, we saw we resolve an entire event sequence. That'll pretty much happen every three rounds, um, but maybe longer, depending on how things go. Then the train moves one step closer to the end of the line. So, what am I going to do? Remember, I get to do two basic actions, and they're all summarized right here for me. Everybody has access to these actions. Move from car to car. Use items if you got them. Open or close the curtains of a car. Interact with the car at, if itself it has a core action. Spend um, occult tokens to get a, learn spells that will help us, although they'll drive us insane. Interact with suspects wherever we are. And then I've got a special one. Because I'm rich, I can make happy or neutral people move to any car I want. Because, hey, I'm rich. People do what I, what I tell them. To do. Um, Jen, she's got the same basic actions, but her special action is she can pick another player um, or herself and put one of their skill tokens, deploy them without actually doing the action, which will make sense as we go on. So anyway, I'm up first. I get to do two of these actions if I spend plus one of these actions. And what do I want to do? Well, there's two things we got to deal. I got to talk. I have to talk to the regular passengers that are represented by these dice. And these dice have multiple faces. They might be a happy passenger, a neutral passenger, a frightened passenger, an angry passenger, an injured passenger, or an insane passenger. Anyway, depending on their mood, I can talk to them. And that's how we can uncover the clues to figure out which suspect is the cultist. So I could spend my time doing that. But folks, if that were all I had to contend with, this game would be easy peasy. But did I mention 
As we barrel through the dreamlands, we are being chased by horrific nightmare fuel creatures. Look at these things. There's these reavers that are literally trying to rip the train apart. There's these howlers that are scaring the heck out of the uh, passengers, making them start to do unwise things. And then there are the absorbers, maybe the most dangerous of all. Um, anyway, as part of setup, you can see there's an absorber outside the um, baggage car. There's a reaver outside the sanctuary, and there is a howler outside the dining car. So I could spend my time moving over those cars and trying to uh, what you can do is you can push the enemies so they get kind of shoved back because if the train can get away from them, they get left behind. I mean, I'm just a, a, a millionaire playboy. I can't actually fight these creatures, but I could trip them up so that they fall behind farther and farther and get left behind by the train. So I could be focusing on that before they have a chance to strike. But if that weren't enough, folks, let's take a closer look at the baggage car. And like I said, all these cars are really cool, too. They're little uh, cardboard contraptions. Uh, they have eight spaces uh, that can hold passengers or the suspects. Here's the uh, crime novelist. Or, well, somewhere on the train, there's the vampire. If Folks, if uh, all else weren't enough, there is a vampire moving from car to car trying to suck the blood of the people. And, man, i got to deal with that also. Now, another thing I can do... I, did I mention... When I move from car to car, I can, this is so much fun, I can open or close the curtains. And um, if I close the curtains, that protects the people inside from maybe some of the worst effects that are out there in the dreamline. Because, hey, out of sight, out of mind. If you can't open the curtains, you can't see. But wouldn't you know, the vampire loves working in the dark. So if the vampire goes to a car where the curtains are closed, well... People are going to die, basically. So you got to keep the curtains open to keep the vampire at bay. Oh, folks, when it rains, it pours here on the Orient Express. And did I mention, by the way... Oops. Oh, I just dropped everything. Did I mention that um, there is more randomization that goes on with these cars? In addition to where the vampire is, where the passengers are, where the suspects are, each car has a potential power that can be on or off. In this game, the baggage car is on, which means if I come here, if there's no suspects here... I can take a look at any of the tickets of any of the suspects to help track down um, who is the cultist. Alrighty. But, you know, in a different game, that power might not have been. As part of setup, three of the six cars randomly have their powers turned on. So there is so much setup variability for this game, folks. It's just amazing. The uh, cars are put in random spots, whether their powers are on, whether their curtains are open or closed, whether the, uh, you know, who's in the cars what's chasing the cars. There's so much variety, plus all the variety of our characters and the suspects and everything else. Anyway, though, oops, that's not right. The setup card says uh, in the uh, Furgon or the baggage car, there should be a scared person and an angry person and the vampire. So uh, not, a, not an insane person, but a scared person and an angry person. There we go. All right, so I've reset the car up. So anyway, what am I going to do? Well, like I said, I'm here in the first life now. I could move over here and start trying to push the bad guys away. I could come over here and try to open these curtains because the vampire won't scare those people. Um, I could come over here and try to get these people out of this car to save them from the vampire. I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, remember, I've got a couple... I've got a bunch of... I can do two of these actions. I'm going to interact with the car I'm in because this time, the first class sleeping car has its power available. And its power is, if I interact with it, it's get occult tokens. And I'm totally going to do that. In fact, I'm just going to use my two um, regular actions. I'm going to spend one, two stamina and get myself two occult tokens. We're going to need those. Those are one of the most important resources in the game. The more that I got, the better. They can help in a lot of different ways. I mean, one of the things I can do with them is I could have spent one action getting one occult token by interacting with the car and then spending it to learn a spell. But we have not learned how to cast spells yet, so it doesn't make much sense to do that. So I've already done my two basic actions, but I'm going to do a major action now, which means I'm going to take this and I'm going to activate one of these six actions. And I'm not going to fight. I'm going to talk. And me, I've got two ways to talk. I could let the money talk, which is a basic action that any millionaire could do, but I'm a fast talker. This is my special power. If we look at it a little bit more closely, it clearly says that um, I can do a level 5 talk with a neutral person or a happy person. That's opposed to my normal one, 
which is a level 4 talk, not quite as powerful, with a neutral or a scared person. And if I'm successful in talking, the person I talk to becomes angry. So this is not as good. I mean, this is a decent talking thing, even if it makes people angry. Whereas this one, hey, um, but here's the thing. I need to talk to either happy or scared people or neutral or happy people. Now, I'm here in the first class sleeping car. As part of setup, there is a neutral person and an angry person. Um, the neutral person will talk to me if I fast talk them. So that's what I'm going to do. This is my first action. Or my first thing, I interact with the car twice, got some occult symbols. I'll use those later. Now we're going to talk. Talking is one of the two biggest actions in the game. So much so that, I mean, this game comes with several different player aids. There's this player turn sequence, and on the back, there's a summary about how you win and lose the game. Uh, there's another one where it talks all about how to fight the monsters by pushing them, or banishing them, or removing them. And on the other side is the very uh, detailed breakdown of how we talk to people. I'm doing a level 5 talk. So, I have to be in a car with the person I can talk to. I am. So what I do is, I draw 5 tokens from the conversation bag, return the fails, and then, after I've done that, I start drawing, um, pushing my luck, until I get what I want. Here's the bag of conversation. There are 28 tokens in here. The tokens are of two types. Co uh, conversation topics. I'm trying to draw these, but then there are also conversation dead ends, and I don't want to draw those. So, because I'm doing a level 5 talk, I get to draw 5 right out of the gate, and um, I don't have to risk busting. This is a push-your-luck minigame, but I can't bust during my first 5 talks. So, oh, I got a fail. I got a dead end. That's no good. I got another dead end. Oh, that's terrible. Come on, I need some successes. Give me a, give me a success. All right? Second class. Uh, if I can draw one more second class token from this bag of 28, there are three of each topic. There's two more second class topics in here. If I can draw another one, then I could ask about any... Um, clue of any of the second class suspects. I'm drawing two more, because remember, I, I did an initial five. So, show me second class. Oh my gosh, it's another fail. Come on, this is terrible. And okay, fine. So, that was my initial five. There was free. Um, if that hadn't been free, because I drew two fails of the same symbol, I would have busted and lost everything. But in my initial five, I was in no risk. But now, I'm in a risk. I can keep drawing until I either bust or or I stop. Now, I need to have two matching tokens. Two to be able to talk about the desires of the suspects, or two of this to be able to talk about any second class uh, suspect I want. So let's draw, and I want to see... And there, there's, there's two more of these in the bag, and two more of these in the bag. Show me one of them. Show me one of them. Come on, here we go. Oh my gosh, right? I hit the jackpot. Now, I could stop. I could stop and get away uh, with it and learn one clue about a second class. But I haven't drawn any bad stuff yet. Let's push our luck. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can get another one of these. Nope. But I've got another topic now. If I get another first class, then I could talk about first class um, folks as well. Let's keep pushing my luck because I still haven't seen any bad ones yet. I got all those out of the way in the first draw. Oh, I spoke too soon. So now there are. For each one of the conversation topics, there's three of them in the bag. For each one of the failures, there are four of them in the bag. So, if I draw again, there are three tiles in this bag that have this symbol, which would cause me to bust and lose all my, process, all, all my progress. On the other hand, there are two more of this topic and two more of this topic. So, there are four tiles that would help me, and only three tiles that would hurt me. And then a bunch of other tiles as well, because there were 28 to begin with. 28 minus what? Five. So we're down to 23. Of the 23, I've got a better than 50-50 shot of getting something good than something bad. Although really, what I'm most likely to get is something new. So i got to ask myself, do I push my luck? Do I reach in? Do I reveal this? If, if, if it's this, I lose that. Oh, should I do it? But if it's one of these, I get more information. The faster we can get it, the better. Should I do it, folks? I don't know. I shouldn't do it, but I'm going to do it. And boom. That's a fail. Now, what does that mean? What that means is, because I got two of the same, all my progress is lost. It all goes back in the bag. And the tile that forced me to lose, um, this effect happens. What this effect is, the person I'm talking to, they get so pissed off at me, they move to the next car. 
Um, literally, that little die I'm talking about will move over there. Not that bad. It could have been worse. I mean, I could have, uh, you know, ticked them off. I could have hurt my own sanity of my learning stuff. But now here's the deal. I will, I mean, so that failure is simple. It's pretty straightforward. I want to show you how success works. And if I had stopped with one success, it would have been fine. Or if I had drawn and I'd gotten that, I'd have two successes. And then I'd have to decide whether to keep pushing. Now, I guarantee you folks, if I had drawn this, two successes, there's no way I'd push my luck. Although, man, actually getting a third of the same type doesn't help. But um, I let's say instead of drawing the failure, I drew a success. Because I want to show you how the systems work here. But normally I would have busted. I pushed my luck. I pissed them off and they left. But instead, I got a gold mine. I get to learn about any clue of any of the second class passengers. And I get to learn about the desire of any of the pass or of the suspects, I should say. And um, what am I going to do? Well, right out of the gate. So, as part of setup, two of the passengers revealed stuff to me. And this time, it was the uh, crime reporter who revealed a desire. The crime reporter wants to be in a car with someone who's injured. Why? Well, when this was revealed, we... Um looked at this card. We, we, we drew a random card. There are several of them that fall under this. We slid it under here. And if I deliver on the desire of the crime writer, I'll find out what... I'll find out, first of all, whether the crime writer is a cultist or whether they're a normal person. And if they're a cultist, what's on the other side of this card is terrible. It's devastating. It's a bad thing. Whereas if they're not a cultist, it's a big thing that will help us. So that's a risk. If you do, if you fulfill the desire of somebody, are they a cultist or not? Now, remember, I know about her. I also randomly found out about the psychologist. We found out the psychologist's desire is they want to be next to an artifact. Oh my gosh! It just so happens I have an artifact because I am an eccentric millionaire playboy. I have the crown of madness. I could have chosen because I'm in the car with the psychologist. I could have chosen to give him this. And then that would have fulfilled his desire. I would have found out all of the clues and we would have found out if they were occultists or not. But that would have been very dangerous. I think before I give this crown of madness to the psychologist, I want to find out more about them. So, hey, I get to find out about a second class. So, the psychologist or the medium or a good old... Seamus Sullivan, the Sly Boots. So I can find out any token about any of them. Um, but on top of that, I can find out about a desire of anybody from first or second class. So I could find out the psychologist's second desire, or the uh, Fran Fletcher, the medium's first desire, or uh, Seamus's first desire. Or I could find a desire from somebody else. Let's see. So, here's the deal. Do I want to double down and find out more about the psychiatrist? Because then I could reveal with the I could reveal one of his items that he's carrying and I could reveal um his other desire. And that would help me figure out. Because how do I know if they're occultists? Well, we've got this little cheat sheet right here. This is the cultist identity. If one of the six cultists is wearing has on their person the um the blood red fez. Whenever I, you know, and so one of these blues, and because they're all spread out, one of them is the Fez. When I find that Fez, I find a cultist, and I've got to deal with them immediately. Um, so that's one way you could tell. So I could use this to look and see, oh, do you have a Fez? And later on, do you have a Fez? Do you have a Fez? So over time, if I can look at more of these things, I can try to find that Fez. Now, alternatively, if I check their ticket, and if their ticket is going to Constantinople, three of the passengers are going to Constantinople. If they're going to Constantinople, and they have a desire to see an artifact, and we know already the psychologist does have a desire to see the artifact. So if this is a ticket to Constantinople, and by the way, remember, these were all randomly placed out here. So, if this is to Constantinople, and they want to see the artifact, we already know that, and they are not carrying an elder sign, then I would know they're a cultist. Now, alternatively, the third way they can be a cultist is if, of all of these tiles the psychologist has, if four of them on the other side are purple, that means... And it's possible that four of them might be purple, and they might have the red fez. It's possible that all three of these things, if any one of these things is true for the psychologist, I found one of our two cultists, and I'm one step closer to winning the game. Now, on the other side is a handy dandy little summary of how you can tell. You know, this would be maybe if you discover everything on a person, whether they're a cultist or not. And on this side, there's a nice breakdown of hey, of all the purples, 
th there are three elder signs out there. There's one Fez. There's three tickets to Constantinople. Um, there are only two people who want the... Uh, yeah, so... That's what I got to figure out. The more of this I can see, the more likely I am to discover if they're a cultist. If they're not a cultist, I want to give him my crown of madness to get the benefit. If they are a cultist, I don't want to do that. So with all that in mind, I'm tempted to use my desire topic and ask my, um, my, the person I'm talking to, hey, tell me about a desire of the psychologist. And then I'd get to flip this over. Now, here's the problem. I've already revealed the first desire, so that put this card out. If I say instead reveal the uh, desire of the medium, Say I do that. Then I will find out whatever this is and we'll put their desire card. So I've got another objective. Right now I've got two objectives. Get an artifact over here, get an injured person over to her or get her to an injured person, right? The more of these objectives I have, the more we could be... And the sooner I know, the better. If I reveal their second desire, it's their minor desire. They don't care about it as much. It's not going to give me another goal card. But it will help me determine, hey, how many purples do they have? Or, um, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, oh, by the way, also I should say, here's a nice little summary of all of the clue tokens that have been spread amongst the six. You'll notice I've already um, knocked out that we know where this token and this token is. So, through process of elimination, the more of these we find, uh, the better we go. So, am I going to find out about uh, the other desire there and narrow down? Or am I... No, I don't think I'm going to. Let's... Um, Let's see. We know that um, Jen is in the car with the medium. So let's have Jen find out what's the desire, one of the desires of the medium. So we're using these, put them back in the bag, and find out a desire. I have no idea what it's going to be. It is, oh, they would like one of these cards. Okay. So what that means is I come over here to the big old deck of cards with all kinds of topics. I find one of the ones that has that symbol on it. And so, every time we play, I don't know if it's going to be that card or that card. Even if I memorized all the cards, you can never be sure what card it's going to be. But here's what we've just discovered about um, uh, Madame Fletcher. Uh, she's a socialite. Why didn't she choose the other car class? Does she gossip? Yes, she does. And we slip this under here. We now know that this suspect desires to be in a car with another suspect um, who has an active favor. Now, I didn't mention this. Every one of these suspects has a favor they can do for us. There's the favor token. So, uh, Madame Fran wants to be with somebody else who can do a favor. Currently, uh, the psychologist and the... Uh, uh, the uh, crime writer can't. We, um, you know, as part of setup, when we found out their desires, they got flipped, so we can't get those. But if we move her to the car with the sly boots, he's got a, and we could de deliver her desire, and we'd find out what this is. So we've got another objective we can pursue now. Now, let's go on ahead and talk to s about some second class. And I'm gonna double down on this one again. I could ask anything about the psychologist. I could once again do the, but I want to find that Fez. So let's go on ahead and flip one of these. Let's see what we get. Oh, boom! It's one of the three elder signs. Remember, there's only three of them. So we know that um, because the psychologist is carrying an elder sign, well. They can't be a cultist because they want to go to Constantinople and they want to see an artifact because they have the Elder Sign. Now, they might still be a cultist if they have the Red Fez or if they have four purples. And currently, I can see they've got two purples. Haven't seen any of those yet. So we haven't ruled it out, but we ruled out one of the three potential ways that the psychologist might be the... Um, one of the one of the cultists we're trying to get. So, and by the way, I should make note of this. It's important that we have just found one of the elder signs. Yay. And what else did we find? Oh, we found the uh, conversation one, right? Where is that? We found this. So over time, we can start figuring out, right, well, of the stuff we haven't seen, what's the likelihood that this person um, has a ticket to Constantinople or not? So you make notes of those as you go. So unfortunately, I didn't get to ask about somebody in first class, but that's it, folks. That was a conversation. That was my first turn. And now, conversations actually go really fast, but it was a lot for me to describe how it all works. Sorry about that, but it's a big part of the game, is this whole deduction element, trying to get to the right place at the right time to talk to people with our special powers and start to deduce who the cultists are. And um, yeah, I think we found some good info. So anyway, I did the fast talk, and I got myself two occult symbols. So I'm finished 
Um, where's the uh, play rate again? With step one, my major and my basic actions. And again, normally this would have taken me like a minute, not however long I've been talking because so I've been describing everything. Now we go to the event bag and we're going to have an event. That's the other bag. There are events in here. Some of them are good. Most of them are very, very terrible. Let's see what we get. All right, we're just going to draw in and boom. Okay, this is not a good one. This is the event that says there is a potential that the passengers, the, the dice people, that they are going to have problems. There's a whole deck full of bad stuff that they can get into. They can start fights. They, they can go crazy. Um, you know, they, they can try to sabotage. All kinds of things. And because you know they're under a lot of stress. So what happens is I take this token... And I put it right here. You can see it's got the three dots. I put it on that three dot symbol. Um, and that means if this doesn't change, eventually we're going to draw the first card from here and we're going to have to deal with some problems with the passengers. Now, um, the next step... And by the way, I should say, there are three types of tiles. I drew the type that doesn't do anything immediately. What happens is, once three of these four depots, the 1 dot, 2 dot, 3 dot, and 4 dot, once three of these four have been filled, we would then deal with an event sequence where we would, where that's when this would happen and three other things would happen. Now, it's also possible that I could have drawn an instant or a one-time event, but I didn't draw either of those. So, we nothing happened right now, but we're getting closer to an event sequence. Sequence. And now finally, the last thing that happens on my turn is... Choo-choo! The train moves forward one step. Okay. That's it. I am done. Yikes! So now it's Jen's turn. She gets to do one of her core actions, two basic actions, and then she'll draw a tile. So right out of the gate... She could talk as well. She's not as good a talker as me, though, because being a professor, she lectures the people. Now, only happy and neutral people will even put up with it. She only gets to draw three as part of her safe early draw. And But the interesting thing is, she can move herself and any number of happy or neutral people to an adjacent car after it's over. So this has a side benefit of being able to move the passengers from one place to another, or move herself for free, because normally it's a basic action that requires stamina. So she can do a walk can talk lecture. She can act like she's on a, a West Wing, an Aaron Sorkin show or something like that. So, she could start lecturing the people in her car. Uh, could she? Yes. I believe in the second class, there is a happy person in the car. So Jen could lecture and we could get more clues. But I'm not going to do that because I'm sure you folks would like to see something else, right? Well, if we look a bit more closely at what Jen can do, one of her special abilities is Spot Hidden. She can immediately, without having to talk to anybody, she can just look at someone and reveal one of the item clues on a, on a wherever she at. So she could, first thing, she could move from the sleeping car over here, and then she could use that and look at another one so we could further determine if the psychologist has the red fez. Um, or if the psychologist has four purple tiles, which means they're a cultist. Or, I mean, heck, she's in here. She could reveal either of these and look for the fez. But, remember, did I mention... There's evil, scary nightmare creatures that are chasing the train. Maybe we should deal with that. Jen has a couple of ways of dealing with that. One of them is she could do field experiments. If she goes to a car where there's one of those monsters, she could push with a plus one strength. And then if there were no passengers in the car, she would banish any other ones that were there. Uh, best not to go into particulars about what that field experiment is. So she could get rid of a lot of monsters. One of them maybe permanently and some of them temporarily with the banishment. Alternatively, um, Jen could... Let's see, what's the other one? Oh, yeah. She could do some rationalization. She could just go to a car where there's a monster, banish one, which means it temporarily goes away um, because she rationalizes it um, you know, into non-existence, but it will come back. But in addition to that, she gets to remove some of the essence of the bad events that are happening, and that's actually pretty cool. Okay, I think Jen's going to try and rationalize. She's a scientist. She doesn't believe any of this is happening. So she's going to scully this uh, situation. So she started out in the second class. First of all, she is going to spend one of her seven stamina to move up to two. So she's going to move over here to the dining car, where there is a, uh, a howler right outside the window. Howling, and that if that howler gets to activate, it's going to start terrifying everybody and cause us all kinds of trouble. Okay, so she's done one action. Now, she is going to 
Rationalize. This says banish a monster and remove all the essence from the leftmost active portal. I haven't even talked about the portals yet, folks. So first of all, this monster is banished. Bye bye Howler. We just don't believe in you. And what does that mean? That Remember, this is the dreamland, so we can literally just rationalize them away. But they'll be back. It goes over here to Limbo. Later on, any monster that uh, is in Limbo has the opportunity to come back, and guaranteed will come back. So it's not the best way to get rid of the monsters. The best way to get rid of the monsters is um, use an ability that lets us remove them entirely, you know, via some kind of special trick, or um, pushing them. Because if Jen, instead of rationalizing, had decided to use her field experiment, that would be a push plus one. And so what that means is... The monster will get pushed backwards um, one step in this space, because there's a plus one, plus whatever the speed of the train is. And the train starts at a speed of one. But if we come up to the, uh, the engine, we can increase the speed of the train so it's going two or even three. And so if the train were going faster, we're going two, and then Jen did a push one, she would have one plus two plus three. That means this monster would just get pushed woohoo all the way gone and go back into supply and wouldn't bother us anymore. So that's the main way we deal with monsters, by pushing them in concert with how fast the train is going. But Jen didn't do that. Jen literally rationalized them away. Logically, you can't exist, and therefore it doesn't exist. It'll be back, though. And Jen gets to remove one essence from the portal. I haven't even talked about those things yet, folks. Remember, the train is here moving down this track. As part of setup, there are all these random portals that are going to open up that have all kinds of terrible ca catastrophes and calamities waiting for us. But the portals only activate if they've got essence. And so currently we have one portal, this starting one, that says, hey, every time this activates, remove essence from the game. If we run out of these... Uh, the supply of these, we lose the game. It's like running out of cubes in Pandemic. And this uh, effect is going to make us burn through these faster. So Jen just said, hey, I got to remove one of them. So if we can remove two more of these, then this effect won't bother us anymore. And we don't have to worry about that. So Jen started working on that problem. She temporarily got rid of a monster. And she still has one more stamina. So she could do another basic action if she wants. And I think she is going to do one. You don't have to. You could save your, uh, you know, sound for later. But Jen's going to do another action. She moved. She used her main action. And now she could move more. She doesn't have an item, so she can't do that. She could close the curtains to uh, make this car more safe from the monsters outside the train, but make uh, it more dangerous for the monster inside the train, the, uh, the vampire. She could use the action of the car she's in, uh, which she might do. She could, well, she doesn't have any occult, so she can't her spell. But she could also interact with who's in here, the Maestra. And there are a bunch of things you can do when you interact with the suspects. Here's a handy dandy at a glance list of them all. Um, you could use a favor. So Jen could ask a favor of Maria Mysterio, the uh, maestra, and that would flip her over so we can't use her favor again unless we unlock it somehow, but could move any two passengers to a chosen train. And ma manipulating the passengers around it can be an important thing we want to do. So could use that favor. Um, could fulfill their quest, although we do not know. Uh, and by the way, they're called desires now. They used to be called quests. So we don't know what her desire is, so we can't fulfill it. Uh, could ask about a feature, which is to say, if the uh, maestra, say if, uh, we haven't revealed one yet, but say if the maestra had one of these features they're called that had this little squiggle on it, we could ask her, hey, tell me more about your your your, your poodle or whatever the item might be, and or actually, specifically, tell us more about your parrot, if they had a parrot. And then we could actually, well, we wouldn't know which one, but we could look at one of the parrot cards and, and have a little bit more of a story adventure. Now, we don't know any of the items she's got, but here's what, here's what Jen could have done. She could have moved to this car, and instead, she could have spot hidden stuff. She could have looked at the things on the maestress person, and then could have asked about them to get more information and you know get all kinds of bonuses and stuff like that. Or alternatively, could push her off the train. Now, you don't want to do that, uh, you can only do that if you've proven definitively they are cultists. And if you do, then that helps us. So um, that might be something we'd be doing later. So Jen could interact with the uh, Maestra, but I don't think so. I think she's going to interact with the train. The same way I interact with the train to get some uh, tokens, Jen's going to interact with the train to move one of her gold things. Because 
She can't rationalize anymore. This is blocked. Until she rests, she can't do this. But by interacting with the dining car, she could take this and put this on a different action. One that she doesn't plan on doing. Like, say, lecturing. And then that opens up the rationalization so she could do that again and get rid of more monsters and get rid of more of the essence, as an example. So that might make sense for Jen to do. And I think that is what Jen's going to do. So what action is she going to... Um, Let's see. The radioactive panaceum, to use this, requires Jen being in a car with no passengers. And then she says, clear out all the stuff. There are passengers in every single car. So I think Jen's going to say, well, I can't really use that to good effect right now. So she's going to uh, move that out of the way so she can do more rationalization and take care and just move further back in the car and temporarily take care of those other baddies that are going to be giving us a problem. So that was Jen's turn. She moved she, with, with her uh, stamina. She rationalized. And then she changed rationalization to radioactive and panaceum. All right. So now, at the end of Jen's turn, we're going to go back to the event bag. And we're going to draw. And we're going to see what we get. And okay. This is an instant. And what this says is the train instantly moves up one step. And whenever an instant happens, you remove it from the game. And then you draw again. All right. So... Another thing is going to happen. And what does Jen find? Okay. Oh, these are the specials. Okay. Um, these immediately happen, but then Jen won't draw anymore. So what is this? This is not good. This means somewhere on the train, the cultists have actually triggered a ritual. And that was uh, that's over here. Let me go ahead and grab this so you can look at it a bit more closely. So the... Nightmare procession ritual is now going to happen because for the event, Jen drew this. So, as it says, resolve the visible incantation. Players can spend any number of occult symbols to, to uh, weaken it, to reduce its power. And remember, I've got some occult symbols. I picked these up. So I could spend these to make the nightmare procession not as powerful. But this is going to happen right now. Now, what is the power of this? The ritual power is equal to the number of ritual tokens up here. And there are none. Because they haven't been able to build up much of a ritual yet. Plus the number of insane people on the train. So, and fortunately, we're early on. So not very many people have gone insane yet. How many insane passengers do we have? We've got one. Two. Yeah, one um, over here in the sanctuary, one, um, you know, whoever is the engineer has gone insane. So it's only a power level two, which means I could spend these two occults and counter that out, and it's like the ritual won't happen at all. But what is the ritual? For each power point, all monsters move forward one step, and um, a frightened person becomes an insane person. And then this goes away and is replaced with another ritual. So if I don't want this, if I, if I want this to, I mean, this is going to happen, but if I want this to have no particular bad things, I could spend these, or we could just let it happen. I'm going to let it happen, because you know what? That means the monsters will come to Jen, instead of Jen having to move her way back. Because she's ready to rationalize them away. So, uh, for each ritual point, all monsters move forward one step. So, the Reaver moves forward right into Jen's rational arms. And the Absorber moves forward. Okay. Um, for each ritual point... Oh, but they move twice. So, they're actually... Uh, they're moving twice. So, move forward again. The Reaver gets past Jen, but now the Absorber is here. Although, if we wanted to move once... I could have spent one of my occult tokens, and this only happened once. But now, because two of these have happened, two frightened people are going to go insane. Um, and that makes for future rituals more powerful. And, and it has other bad effects, too. As you might imagine, you don't want to be on a train with crazy people. Um, all right, so uh, how does this work? It's uh, frightened people. Wh whenever you have a thing like this where... It's like, okay, well, we have to figure out well, which frightened people become insane. You always work from the front of the train back. So we start at the front of the train and go backwards till we find a frightened person. Frightened person. Okay, here's one. That person in the room with Jen just went insane. And then the one all the way back here in the uh, baggage car. So we've just lost two scared people and gotten two insane people. Could have been worse. Now, we reveal the next time a ritual is going to happen. It's going to be Eldritch Whispers, where each player loses one sanity. And we maybe lose another sanity for every two power points. And, again, more frightened people become insane. So, that's going to be in our future. But anyway, that was the end of Jen's turn. And so far, we haven't, we've only drawn one of these things that are building up for like a really big super event. So, Jen is done. It is now my turn. Oh, but wait, but wait, one more thing happened before it's my turn. Remember, at the end of the turn, the train always moves forward one. And boom, we've just crossed over 
to a new portal, which again was randomly placed out. And this portal says there's some insane momentum. So we put one of these tokens on here. Hold, no, that's not quite right. I totally forgot, folks. And I'm going to mess this up for the rest of the run through, making things a little bit easier than they should be. But I figured I should stop and correct this. You put one portal or one essence on the portal, I should say. And then you put one additional one for every passenger on board who is insane. I think I've got three of them right now, so I should be putting four of them on here, which means it's going to be that much harder to get rid of the insane momentum of the, this particular portal that is going to spell our doom. So uh, that is why you need to keep the, uh, the dice representing passengers calm and orderly and not let them fall into despair and madness because then that makes these potential porters, they portals feed off that madness and they become more powerful. So I shouldn't be putting one token on here. I believe right now I should be putting four. And folks, this is why you always watch the Klingon subtitles turned on because I'm sure Paulo is already correcting that and will keep me on the straight and narrow moving forward. So remember, I'm just kind of playing on easy mode by not putting as many essence on this portal as I should. Let's get back to it. And as long as this portal is open, um, whenever Insane Momentum activates, move the train one space forward for each uh, insane person. And that could be a bad thing because that means the timer is ticking faster. The, fir the faster the train moves, the less time we have to figure out who the cultists are. Now, we might want the train to be moving faster, um, or, you know, because, uh, but, but here's the thing the how far it moves here is independent of that. If we speed up the uh, train so it's easier to push enemies away, that's one thing. This is just saying, oh, the end of the game is coming faster and giving us less time to do our deduction. So I forgot to mention that. But now, if we clear out essence, like you saw Gen do before, then that portal won't bother us at all. So um, that's one of the things we need to be doing as well. Keep these portals under control. Keep the monsters under control. Spend time talking to passengers, um, you know, and deducing who the suspects are, etc. So anyway, what am I going to do? Well, you know what? I'm rich, and so when, sometimes rich folks just like to call in the help of their dad, right? So how about I get some help from Papa? Let's say this is my thing. Uh, it's going to be continuing what Jen started to do, which is remove essence from a portal, any portal. And if this portal is in the past, I get, oh no, it's not in the past. I'm still here. If, if I wait until the train is further ahead and then this is in the past, then I could remove this and a double. So no, okay, I don't want to get pa help from Papa just yet. I want to do something else. I could talk some more, but there's nobody in my room who will let the money talk. I could pay them up. I could use this to make this angry person happy so that then I could talk to them on the next turn. But hey, if I want to get more info, I've got a totally unique way to do it. I could try to find out the freshest buzz. What's the buzz? Tell me what's a happening. I think that's what I'm going to do. But to do it, I have to be in the salon. So the first thing I'm going to do is spend some um, stamina and I'm going to move. I'm going to move forward. One, two, and I'm in the salon, which is hopping. This is where uh, Seamus the Sly Boots is. There are one, two, three happy people and two angry people there. Okay. Right? Yes, that's right. So I spent that, and now that I am here, I can draw. Well, here's the deal. If I spend time making more people in the salon happy, and then, I mean, there's two angry people. If I make the, everybody happy, basically, I get to draw from the bag for every happy or neutral person here in the salon, because they'll talk to me because I'm just trying to get gossip. And um, I don't have to worry about busting. And uh, I only have to reveal one to, uh, and normally you have to get a pair to reveal a clue, but I could get them off of single. So that's really, really cool. But right now, I'd only get to draw three. So what if I, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What if I came here and then I pay them up to make one of these angry people happy? So now if I do it, I'll get to draw four. And um, I can send a happy person with another person from my car to a chosen car. So I could say, hey, I want this angry person out of here. I could send one of these happy people. But no, I want to make everybody here happy. So, or I want a gen to redirect happy people over here so I can do a bigger turn. So let's say that's what I did. I, uh, I moved over to the salon. I spread some money around to make somebody angry happy. And um, I still got one more. I could do one more action um, here in the salon. But you know what I could do? And now that I'm here in the salon, I could... Uh, uh, interact with Seamus. I could ask him for a favor. I could tell him to move to any car. He would do a push action there to start pushing away the bad guys. Um, and that would clear up another space so I could get more happy people in the salon. So I could do that. How about I do that? So um, for my other 
uh, stamina. I'm going to say, hey, Seamus, could you could you do uh, could you do us a favor? Uh, Seamus says, Faith Bagora. I don't know how to do it. I'm not going to try. So we're going to move to a car. So Seamus, where do I move you? Let's move them over here to the uh, first class sleeping. And they say, hey, this is pretty nice. And they're going to do a push plus one, which means this moves one and then one more because of the speed of the train. If the train had been going three, it would have been pushed right off the board and gone. But we're just keeping that back. And now there's more room for happy people in the salon before I start getting a huge amount of uh, info from everybody. So that was it. I did my two. I did my main action. And now we got to go to the event bag again. Here we go. And what have we got? Okay, we've got another one. So once we get a third one of these tokens in place, we'll trigger everything. And this one says, you know what? All the text-based stuff is going to happen. So that means this is going to happen and this is going to happen, which means we should clear these essences out before it happens. This is one of the nice things. You can see the events that are coming and you can prepare for them. So Jen's got time to clear this out so that um, the train won't move extra steps with the insane momentum. Anyway, meanwhile, the train does move forward. One more step happens at the end of every turn. And now it is Jen's turn. And now Jen can rationalize again. That's her main action. She's doing it to scare this monster away. Bye bye um, And removing another. Let She can remove another from here, but let's have her remove this one so that the momentum just never happens. Fine. So that was her main action. And now she can do two. She's still got stamina, so she can do more stamina actions. So how about Jen for one of her stamina action, now we'll interact with the maestra who says, hey, oh, and by the way, this got flipped, so we've used that, use this favor, move uh, any two passengers to a chosen car. Jen says, hey, happy person, move up to the salon. I hear there's quite the buzz going on up there. And what else? Uh, let's see, are there any other happy people? Yeah, just uh, any two people. Now, I could be wrong about this. I'm not sure um, if... Move, I mean, move any two, you'd think that'd be anywhere in the board, but it might be just in the car we're in. So I might be wrong about that. I might be cheating. And if so, folks, that's why you turn on the Klingon subtitles. Um, in fact, actually, to be fair, there is a rule in the game. Um, so I'll put you back where you came from. All right? Or no, no, you were over... Where were you? It was this one. It was this one. All right, so... Anyway, the rule, the universal rule, the golden rule of this game is if you're ever not quite sure about a thing, you are supposed to choose the option that is the the, the most damaging, the worst thing for you. So the worst thing would be, oh, this can only work here. I, I could be wrong about that again. The Klingon subtitles will make this clear. But we're going to say that, oh, it has to be. So let's go on ahead and send this. Uh, well, don't have to. It's uh, move any two. But I think any two means anywhere. So I could be wrong about that. We'll just move this person up here. So now I've got two people to cheer up. But, uh, all right. So, anyway. Uh, so now the salon is full of Lyria. There's no room for anybody else there. Okay. So, um, that was interacting. And, right. Does she want to do another action? Because she has one more stamina. Um, she could, once again, rearrange things. Uh, right? Because she's in that car. Or she could move again. Right. This is interesting. As this one is getting closer to the edge, we could potentially push it off. Right, what was Jen's push? The nice thing... Er. Or does Jen just not do anything? Jen doesn't have to. She can save her stamina instead of doing these actions. I think so. I think she's uh, spent one stamina to interact with the Countessa. And again, I feel like if any, it means I could have... Well, we'll deal with it. And she didn't use her other. So now at the end of her turn, once again, we're going to draw. And we'll see what happens. Boom. And... Boom, folks. Uh, um, it is time to for Zepsky. When three of the four spots are covered, and they are, we're going to deal with all of these in this order. And you'll notice this spot didn't get covered. This says um, red and green monsters attack and spawn blue monsters. If we'd gone a different way and drawn a different one, so it was like this, hey, no monsters would have attacked. And something else would have happened in this space. Uh, the, uh, the vampire. So if, if we had drawn the vampire token, we would have covered... Let me see, see if I can draw it now really quick. Nope. Uh, er, if instead of having drawn this earlier, if we had drawn... All right, I'm not finding it, but there is a vampire token in here. Here it is. If we had drawn the vampire token, then the event sequence would be do portals, then do the vampire, then no monsters do anything, then uh, make the ritual more powerful. But that's not what we drew. Instead, we drew this. So we're going to resolve 
all of this stuff, starting with the portals. So this portal says, hey, remove one essence from the supply. If we run out of these, we lose. So that's a timer. This portal doesn't happen, though. The train does not speed up because we did clear that one out. So this is done. Boop, goes in the discard pile. Now, every red monster activates, and then one green monster activates. Because you see, it's the bigger and then the smaller. Now, we only have one monster out there, and it is a red, so it's going to activate. And this little thing reminds us how it works. If, um, and it's every reaver, every reaver, if they're in a car with people, and uh, the reaver is, there are people there uh, at the sanctuary. All passengers lose one stamina, and uh, one happy person gets injured. Otherwise, um, one person gets killed because of a slash. Now, if they were by a car with nobody in there, then instead they would just run. They would dash forward two steps, two cars. And if they're ever at the locomotive, then if they're up here, they try to destroy the locomotive. They reduce the speed. If the speed of the train ever reduces to zero, we lose. So because there are people there, he's going to try and kill them. And if it was a happy person, if there was a happy person in this room, they would be they would be strong enough to fight and they would get injured. There are no happy. There's a mad person and a, an insane person. So one of those people is going to die. And which one is it? Remember, you always start from the start of the train back. So it is this person. This die has just died. And it's a bit macabre, but the game has a very cool way to represent that. Little plastic coffins. I take this coffin and I put it there. And now that is taking up a space in the car. We only have so many of these coffins. If we run out of coffins, we lose. So there is a slash. We've lost one uh, potential ally in our search for the cultists, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but anyway, that was it for the reaver. And of course, uh, if there were more reavers, all the reavers would activate, and one green monster, one um, howler would activate. But there aren't any other ones. So that's it. We're done with this. Um, but now it says, "Hey, spawn blue, baby." So you can see this portal is capable of spawning blue, reds, and greens. So a blue comes out and um, shows up. Okay. And there might be other blue portals that would reveal themselves over time. This one we can never turn off. But other ones that we might be able to turn off. So blues have spawned. Now it's time for our next event. The, uh, the, the, the audience. Well, hey, they just heard somebody got killed by a reaver. And so what happens? There's a brawl. Of course there is. In every train that has two or more angry people, one of those angry people becomes injured. And in each car with one or more angry people, all suspects move away from that car. So I might think we've actually got this under control. There's only one angry person there, one angry person there, one angry person there. So, nobody gets injured in a fight. But in every car with one or more angry person, all suspects in that car move. So there are no suspects. I already moved the suspect out here. Um, this is an angry person. So both of these suspects say, okay, we're going to leave because you're, you're kind of looking for a fight. So they're just both going to come back here. Boopity boop. All right. Right. And then um, there's this one. Which, uh, but again, uh, it's, it's in the last one, the baggage car. Uh, so it says that the horror I should write, but it can't go off the end. So that's it. They're just going to stay still. They're stuck there with that angry person. So we've just had a brawl. And now finally, the ritual. Remember before, the ritual wasn't very strong. It was basically just equal to the amount of insane people. But now this thing says, put another token. So now whatever ritual, whatever our next ritual is, which is specifically this, the Eldritch Whispers, oh, that is going to drive us insane, it has now gotten more powerful. Over time, the rituals are getting more powerful. All right, so all of those happen. And the last thing that happens is, hey, remember these creatures that were banished? They're back. Um, they come out of limbo. Uh, this is a thing for saying, hey, they come out of limbo, and they just go onto the last car. Now, this is different. Normally, if multiple creatures spawn, they kind of do it in a wave. The first one goes in the first available car, and then the next car, and then the next car, and then they wrap around to kind of evenly distribute themselves. But when they're coming out of limbo, they all just go to the rear car, which means they're fresh. And it doesn't take much to push them away. 
because even a push of zero with our speed of one would push them off the car. So if one of us can get back there and do some pushing, we won't see them for a while. So Jen moved them from up here where they were going to stick around and cause more trouble into limbo. They're back there now and we could push them more easily out of our lives. So those were all the events. That was triggering an event sequence, which usually, like I said, happens every three or four rounds. But it can sometimes take longer depending on how things go. And then finally, the train moves forward one more step. And it's my turn, and you better believe I, I've got five. Pe- I've got five happy people here. That's enough. There's, you know, the angry person. Happy- We're not worried about them. Let's uh, let's go on ahead and um, get to draw. Because of my freshest buzz, I just draw five. If they're bad, I ignore them. If they're good, I only need a single. Now, here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to draw five, and then they're just all bad things that I ignore. I want to see good topics. I want to get a lot of deets from this salon trip. That's bad. No good. Oh, come on. All right, that's one. Yay. I want nothing but good stuff from now on. Come on. Ugh. Oh. Well, okay. So I got one juicy topic. It's uh, I get to look at the desire of anybody. Oh, that was lame. Um, Jeez, Louise. Okay, so who am I going to look at? Do I want to reveal another desire so we have more objectives? No. Now I'm going to go ahead and double down on the psychologist. I want to find out if this is a... Right. So we reveal. They have another one, which is about tomes. This one doesn't matter. The second one we reveal does not create another objective. It's only the first one that creates the objective. But here's the deal, folks. One, two, three. If any of these are purple, then the uh, psychologist is one of our targets. So, um, but again, you know, if we look over here, you can see there's a lot of these that aren't purple. I mean, pretty much half of everything is not purple. So, um, but we found three purples on the psychologist. That psychologist is getting pretty suspect, I got to say. Okay. So anyway, that was my main action. I did the freshest buzz and now I could do two bonus actions. You know what? Since I'm so close, I'm going to spend some to move to the engine. Right, And then my second thing is, I'm going to interact with the engine and speed us up. We are now going two, which means it is easier to push bad guys away. Uh, it doesn't speed up this. This still only moves once at the end of every turn. Oh, by the way, did it move at the end of Jen's turn? I think it did. If not, I'm sure Paulo noted it. So anyway, so I'm just speeding us up so that as the monsters move forward, our pushes will be more effective moving backwards. Right, okay. So those are my actions. And now we uh, draw another event. And the uh, stuff is going to start filling again. And, oh, no, the train's just going to move forward one. That's a little instant. And what does that mean? Boom, we've got a... Oh, okay. This is what I was talking about earlier. We have two essence. We have now two red spawning portals and two blue spawning portals, although these ones can be turned off. And, right, so the train moved forward. Oh, but that was the train moving forward because of the event bag. And the train moves forward again. Okay, and now this is in the past. Remember, I had this thing about, oh, I want to, where was my power? Uh, if I do it while it's in the past. Yeah, if I remove one essence from a location, and if that location is in the past, which this now is because we moved far enough ahead, then I'd remove, so in one action, I could remove both of these and turn that off. Nice. Okay, cool. So that was it for me. The event, the train moved forward. It's Jen's turn. And here's the deal. All those things back there waiting to get pushed, I think Jen, first of all, is going to move back there. One, two. So she's back here with the crime rider now. Right. And there are three monsters right outside the window. Plus, Dracula. Let's not forget Dracula. That's always fun. And so, um, that was one Jen stamina action. Now she could do another one, or she could uh, get working. And so, she could do a field experiment and push one of them away. Um, Now here's the deal. If it'd be better to do the field experiment if there were no passengers here, because then she could banish, push one, and banish them all away. You know what? I don't think she's gonna move all that far away. She's just gonna move here to the sanctuary, right? And she will do her field experiment here because it's a push plus one, right? Because our speed is two plus one means that raver will go away completely. Or is she? Where is she gonna go? Or is she gonna push them around at all? Maybe not. What else might she do? Oh, you know what she could do. Okay, she sends she sends one to come back here. 
right? And then her action she will intimidate. She is a very stern and intimidating professor. This is a special bonus action she got because she was gifted. So she can send one passenger to any car she wants, and then she can uh, spend two, uh, what do you call it, two uh, effort, two stamina to do another one. So by doing this and spending two stamina, Jen could get both of these passengers out of here, which means they're safe from the vampire and now that there's no passengers here, Jen could do her nitrous oxide or her field experiment, push one away and banish the other two and just get rid of all three just like that. So where is she going to send these people? Well, uh, she's got an angry person. All right, they both have to go to the same spot. Let's have them, let's have them come over here to the uh, first class car, let's say. All right, so there we go. Although that's putting two angry people next to each other. You saw they get into a fight. But anyway, so that was Jen. She intimidated them. They all went away. And now Jen has one more action she could do. Um, and hey, how about she'll interact with the car. And the car in the baggage is, if there's no passengers here, and there's not, the uh, suspect does not count as a passenger, then Jen could take a peek at anybody's ticket. And remember, that's one of the things we're looking for. If they've got a ticket to Constantinople, and they don't have an elder sign, and they do have a hankering for artifacts, then they could be a cultist. So how about Jen peek at somebody? Okay, we don't care about him because he, we know he has an elder sign. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, right, so you know she only has one. So chances are she doesn't have an elder sign. Let's see if she's going to Constantinople. And she's not. She's going to Sophia. So we have now found one of the Sophia clues. Right? Which one is it there? We found the person going to Sophia. We know where that is. Okay, cool. So, but now Jen could stay here and just interact and look uh, you know, over a couple of turns at everybody's ticket. So we could just find out where all the Constantinople passengers are. And then we need to check them for, um, you know, for the uh, elder signs. So anyway, so that was it for Jen. She's done. She's going to draw from the bag. And what does she get? She gets another person. So monsters are going to spawn again, and the train moves forward one more step. Okay. And now I think it's time for me to get that help from Papa. Remove one essence from a thing, and if it's in the past, remove another one. So I'll just remove this, and for free, get that. Or, no, this isn't in the past yet. This is number, So I will get rid of both those essences. So that's pretty good. And now I've got two, uh, whatchamacallit, what am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to get out. I mean, moving up to speed two was fine. Do I just want to move back here? I think I might. In which case, I don't think I'll use my other stamina. I'll only use one stamina because next turn I'm going to rest, which means I'll clear all these out and then I could try to get the buzz from this huge crowd of people again. So that was it. I draw an, uh, an item. Let's see what we get. We get, okay, now the vampire is getting ready to go. Okay. And by the way, the bag is empty. So what that means is all of these discard, the ones you've already seen, plus a whole bunch of other ones all go back in the sack jack. And so we're going to see uh, potentially new things coming, including one of the things just went into the sack. Where is one? Is, let's see if I can find it here, is this. If we draw this, it's got the three dots. It goes on top and it says, hey, the passengers won't get into trouble this turn. Uh, it still clowns as one of the three covered things, but nothing bad will happen. And then this will go into the discard, but that will still remain there. So uh, the events, and you know, there are things we can do that can put even more tokens in here. We can have special powers that put tokens in there. So anyway, and then the train moves forward again and we reveal our next open portal. Oh no, this one is an on reveal. Discard the leftmost vampire strength die. The vampire hasn't struck yet, but it's already gotten more powerful. So, currently, the vampire, which we haven't even talked about the vampire yet, there's so much in this game. Whenever the vampire strikes, wherever car they're in, you look at the people who are there. If there's an angry person, hey, they would get injured, but they can't, if it's in a dark room, but they can't be bothered if it's a light room. If, um, but if they're injured, they die either way. If they're scared, in a closed room, they die. In a, in an open room, the window, windows open, they, um, whatchamacallit, they, I can't think of the word, they uh, get injured. But this just got removed. The vampire just got stronger. Now, whether the window's open or closed, uh, spooked people get killed by the vampire. <gasps> oh, shoot. Oh, no, never mind. That's fine. I was thinking, I just realized, oh, the curtains were closed. Oops, sorry. 
The curtains were closed here, but the Reaver doesn't care about curtains. It's the, uh, the one that scares people. This one. When this one activates next to a car, if the curtains are open, um, you know, terrified people or injured people just straight up die. <laughs> um, and uh, then the monster moves forward and uh, scares people in the next room if the curtains are open. So that's why you want curtains closed. But uh, a closed curtain couldn't save this poor person in the casket. Uh, but anyway, though. So, sorry. What just happened? Oh, the vampire in the bag refilled. Okay, so it's Jen's turn. So Jen, she definitely wants to do one more turn, because here's the deal. Jen could rest. She could clear these actions out to do them again by resting. But here, if she does one more action, you'll notice there's two of these. That means Jen gets two upgrades when she rests. The more actions you do before the rest, the more upgrades you get. So Jen wants to do another action. Um, let's see, and she is back there. So now it is time for Jen to do the field experiment. All right, if there's no passengers in your car, um, you know, we'll push one. So she'll push one away and just get rid of it completely. She'll push one of the uh, blue ones away. And now all other ones get banished. So Jen, in one action, just banished, just got rid of three critters with her field experiment. Nice. Now she is out of, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, stamina. So she's not going to do anything else. And now we go to a fresh new event bag full of all kinds of new events. And what do we get? We get, oh, well, this is not great. The Dracula wants to attack. Still, definitely going to attack. Um, no two ways about it. But here's the thing. Uh, remember, it's when three of these get covered that we trigger an event. So we bought ourselves some time. If this one or this event had been covered, then we would have had another Cascade event. But instead, the vampire is just continuing to get ready to strike. And then the train moves forward. Okay. Uh, and by the way, I should say, the train has little wheels under here that slot into the little grooves. So it's very easy to know exactly how far to move it forward. Okay, back to me. I am going to rest for the first time. Boom. We do this. And there are several steps. First of all, I get two upgrades. Um, and those upgrades can be either upgrading my basic actions to become better actions or giving myself new upgrades like a diversified portfolio, um, gilded glamour, power of money, um, or learn how to cast spells. Either that, or I can make my Papa thing a little bit more powerful, or my Buzz. Let's see. Draw one for each in your car. Ignore tokens for each. Right. Oh, so now people don't have to be happy. It's just they just have to be in the salon. So that means I'd be drawing seven. Oh, I want to upgrade the Buzz. What's the Buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the bu Remember, I get two upgrades. So I'm upgrading Buzz. Freshest Buzz. Tell me what's happening. Now, another thing I can do is, I can do this as one of my upgrades, which is move in essence from one portal to another. If I wanted to like shut down one portal and, and do another one, but I don't care about that, I'm going to give myself a new power as well. Like, I don't know, the power of money. Get the... Uh, the um, right. So, basically, this lets me do the get the favors of people uh, with people in the room, and everybody who's medium becomes happy because I just spread the money around. But I think it's time to... I mean, remember, I got these a while ago so that I could learn spells. Let's actually be able to cast spells, shall we? Okay, cool. So I rested. I had two upgrades, so I've spent them on that and that. Now I reset all my tokens. And now I've got a new place I could put my token. Right? Um, I get five stamina back. Not all of it, but just five back. And uh, that was my turn. But... I've now, I still haven't spent my two stamina. So how about I spend my first stamina spending this to learn a spell that I could cast. When you learn a spell, you draw three. One, two, three. And you pick which one you want. So it is Blasphemous Versus. And this is a spell that's available to everybody. Or everybody who has leveled up to get the ability to cast spells. So, remove a monster from anywhere, and if I spend Manic Sanity, also remove a monster from each train where there's a crazy person. So I can get all the crazy people to fight monsters. Um, return one event from the discard to the bag. Okay. Uh, or, instead, return one uh, from or the event board to the bag. Oh, so I could slow down the time. Or donation of blood. Normal or happy people become injured, because I take their blood. And then, um, that's the player symbol, in my car, so me or somebody else in my car with me, restores full stamina, performs a main action, and if I'm manic about it, also that player gets two... Oh, I like that. Let's do that. 
Let's do that one. So we now know a spell. The other ones just go to the bottom of the... Right. And so now I can get a blood donation from uh, people who are with me. And if uh, it's cause... I mean, when to do these things... Uh, costs um, sanity, and if I use manic sanity, it's a more powerful thing. But I gotta go through my calm sanity before I become manic. Okay, or whatever the term is. Right. So, that was one. Um, and I could learn another spell? But I don't think so. I think I'm just gonna save this, uh, because next turn, I've got a big audience, and I'm gonna get a lot of clues. That's gonna be nice. But now at the end of my turn, we draw a token, and, ooh, nope. All right, so, you know what? I'm not going to draw that because I want to make another event happen. I draw a token, and hey, suddenly, the vampire's not going to come. But let's say I didn't draw that one. Let's draw a token. All right, um, boom. This one comes down here. So, the ritual is not going to get stronger. And these didn't get drawn. But at the end of my turn, all this stuff is going to happen again. Every green monster is going to activate, and one blue monster. As it happens, there are no green or blue monsters. Red monsters are going to spawn. All right, so we get two new Reavers. And remember, they uh, they kind of stagger out. So that one goes there. And from that one, and then this one is active. So it one goes there. So now we've got some more monsters to fight that are running alongside. So that was it for monsters. And now the Vampire Strikes. Although, bad news. Sorry, Dracula. We scared all the passengers. Dracula won't feed on us or the suspects, just the passengers. And Jen got them out of the room. Now, if there, remember, I talked about this before. If there was still a passenger in the bank, like say it was an angry one, we would look over here. The curtains are open, so Dracula is less powerful. And if we look at anger, the angry person said, I don't even care about you. You're a Gary Oldman looking silly. Dracula. I mean, look at him. He's not even scary. Whereas if this person had been happy, well, they'd become frightened. Or if they were already frightened, they'd become dead and we'd lose another coffin and running out of coffins is another way we could lose. But as it is, they're all gone. So um, nothing bad happened with um, uh, Mr. Dracula. And if we look more closely, the Dracula says, hey, after I'm done, I'm going to move to the left. If they'd been this one on top, they'd move to the right. But as is, they move to the left. So they're not even going to move. They're going to stay right where they are because they're already at the end of the train. Although this baggage could have been in the middle, in which case they'd go that way or that way. So that was actually pretty nice. Uh, you know, Dracula did not make a good move. All righty. And now we have another event from the people. And they go into the nightmare. In each sleeping car, there are two of them, add a new scared person. So, some people just woke up terrified. Ah, what the heck is going on here? This is terrifying. So, we just added two new terrifying people that woke up in the sleeping cars. And move uh, each suspect one towards their sleeping car. So, um, right. So, Seamus wants to go because uh, he's getting tired. Oops, there we go. And let's see, Madam, what's your name? She's already in her sleeping car. Uh, all right, I just moved Seamus. Uh, right, so she moves to the first class sleeping car where she wants to be. And he gets closer. And they get closer. So they've all moved around. So if we had plans for where they were, well, those plans have just changed because everybody moved. Um, because of all these nightmares, everybody, some people wake up and other people want to go to sleep. All right, so... That was that event. Not too bad in the grand scheme of things. And now, this is a thing, so the rituals don't get stronger. Not too bad. And then the train, as always, moves forward. And it is the next turn. And um, I'm getting ready to get a big buzz, but folks, I think I'm going to stop right there. Because by now, I think you've got a pretty good idea of the overall flow of horror on the Orient Express. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen, or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.